In this video, I'm going to take you through how I built the largest miniature wargaming scale cathedral I've ever seen. I spent hours researching cathedral architecture, mocking up floor plans and cardboard, and a ton more time 3D designing and modeling the parts I would need for this building. I wanted this to be sturdy enough to stand up to moderately heavy abuse, so all the architectural supports are made from MDF pieces designed by me and CNC machined out. I handcrafted foam bricks, cut out shingles, sculpted clay, scratch built priceless artifacts and 3D printed gargoyle to decorate it. I then spent countless hours hand painting every surface and every detail. If you recall my cloister video, I foretold that this day would come. So let's begin. I start by categorizing my main structural pieces. I made these in four types and they represent the main supports that form the backbone of Gothic architecture in late medieval cathedrals. I have two types of tall buttress and vaulted section, a wall window pattern used for both main floor and the uh, clear story windows, and finally a piece that represents the interior aisle columns and triforium windows. I needed to cut out all the tabs and do some light sanding to get the jagged edges to a smoother finish. A lot of the MDF will be exposed on the interior, so getting a decent finish is required. This produces a ton of dust, so wearing a mask is also required. As you can see, taping down a section of sandpaper makes sanding the edges a lot easier. For all the interior curves and edges, I used a cheap emery board. My first instinct was to save all the offcuts, and I can use them as debris inside the church, but I ended up only using very little of these in the end. I'll save them for later, I guess. After all the pieces were cut out, a quick cleanup of the area before assembly was in order. I'm doing this build on top of the main gaming table due to its size, and I knew it would get messy. Adding these painting sheets down saved me a ton of cleanup in the end. I used my cardboard templates to cut out the bases from quarter inch MDF. Double the thickness of the walls, I wanted to make sure it was really unlikely that it would get any warping from all the glue and paint I was going to add on top. I used a handheld jigsaw for all these cuts, very quick work. Hit the like button if you also like power tools. To give the floor some texture and dimension, I cut out some dollar store foam core board and glued it to each base. This had the added benefit of letting me add craters and sink in all the wall sections, as you'll see later. My first crack at assembling the structure was to start with one section of the buttress and vaulted ceiling section. Using super glue to get a sturdy connection was advantageous at this stage when I didn't quite know how I was going to assemble this. For a bit of cathedral trivia, most of the design is based on some of these drawings. The way that the interior vaulted ceilings of these cathedrals was able to stay up and not cave out the walls was the addition of these buttresses which spread the load to the ground while allowing for plenty of sunlight to flow in through the large windows of the clerestory to illuminate the cavernous interior. I made two of these sections at first so I could dry fit them around the base and see where I needed to draw in the floor pattern. I also cut out the channels for the foam core base. I took some time to get the full layout drawn before securing down all of the wall sections. As I wanted my glue joinery to be MDF on MDF, I would need to cut out chunks from the foam core floor where my walls needed to meet the base. This had the added benefit of making assembling the rest of the wall sections very easy, since I could just slot them into the channels. These extra bits I left on my inner aisle arches sinks in the approximate height of the foam core, so that worked out well. Now it's just a matter of adding wood glue to get a strong bond between the floor and walls. I added my already assembled pieces in first, and then the rest with a combination of super glue, wood glue, and hot glue for good measure. Up to this point in the build, I had only really looked at the flat template and some 3D models. It just dawned on me that the scale of this piece of terrain would be enormous. Biggest piece of terrain I've made by far in terms of volume. It's also the main reason I chose to do this in three segments. I wouldn't be able to move it, let alone store it if it was all in one piece. I actually ended up cutting out some of the pieces later on, as you'll see, just so I could get some of the pieces to sort neatly in my bookcase. For the back section here, that's the apse of the church, my regular wall segments wouldn't fit as I did a bit of improvisation with the design. To account for this, I traced out my windows onto some chipboard cardstock and added them in. Once they're painted and detailed, you won't be able to tell that they're a different material. I hadn't 3D designed anything for the front of the cathedral because I wanted to build part of that from scratch. I used some more chipboard and traced out the rough shape of the arch inside of the cathedral onto the outside. Then I came in with a compass and traced out where my cathedral rose would go. That's the fancy circular window thing. This would bring in lots of light into the front of the church and it should line up with the arches on the inside. 
Below the rows, I traced out some smaller windows. There would be a walkway on the inside of the church that could look out of these, right above the main door. I then used some wooden dowels to secure this upright while I built the two towers on either side. I'll only be partially building one of them to give off a ruined look. This is the point where it was clear that I needed to divide my front section into another part, as the facade of the church was too tall to be stored with the long section behind it. I realized I needed to do a bit of trimming on the central buttresses to accommodate for the other two sections slotting in correctly. Using a Dremel here, I made quick work of them. For the center of the church, also known as the crossing, I added some roof support beams as well, as this was the section I wanted to have a full roof and really set the shape for the rest of the building, which would have large gaping holes on either side to allow the interior to be accessible. This is also the point at which I added my central columns, which would frame out the middle roof section. If I ever decide to add a central tower, as you see on some Gothic cathedrals, these would form the supports for it. I quickly added some arches crossed in the middle out of XPS foam. Safety glasses on and time to get wrecking. This is where I cut off the front part of the cathedral and also two small additional apses near the altar. Some destruction always requires a little bit of reconstruction. I added a bit of the arches that came off the front part and added them to the facade section. Then, taking a pair of tin snips, I went around and destroyed sections of the windows where fallen parts of the church were. This would give a more organic separation where the building would have crumbled. Looks like the rose window finished printing on the 3D printer, so I quickly hot glued that in place as well. Now, I did want to add bricks to the whole structure, but adding individual XPS bricks would have been a pain and I wasn't a big fan of carving out bricks on foam core either. I chose to go with a hybrid approach and took a lesson out of Neil's book from Real Terrain Hobbies. I made myself this brick pattern roller out of clay as per his tutorial linked above. Then I went about rolling the pattern onto a section, cutting out the windows and using wood glue to stick the clay to the MDF. This is my first real attempt at doing something like this in clay, so my initial wall sections were a bit lumpier than others. But I quickly got the hang of it and was sailing through the process near the end. One note on making the clay roller. The pattern you get is slightly enlarged due to the way it gets curved around the roller, so use smaller brick sizes when making the pattern that you intend to be able to reproduce. Another tip that I picked up from Mel the Terrain Tutor was to use some sort of powder when rolling the pattern out to make sure the roller doesn't stick. I just used some drywall compound mix, and I think it gave the clay a bit of a rougher look as well. That's why you'll see some of the clay looking a bit powdery. After all of it dried up overnight, I then came in with XPS foam cut bricks to cover all the seams between wall sections and give the whole building a bit more dimension. I think I still ended up doing a full day of cutting XPS bricks on the hot wire table and laying them out. For the buttresses, I ended up making this channel with the hot wire table cranked up a bit higher. It tends to melt off a larger section when you do this. And after getting this profile, I just cut the rod into suitable brick sizes. These slotted onto the 1 8 inch MDF quite well, but I still needed to do a bit of cleanup after the glue dried with a knife to get them looking a bit more straight. I then did some further detailing on the interior to get the arches looking a bit more interesting. I simply cut out thin rods of XPS that let me bend them and glue them into place. Hot glue was my friend here. For creating some of the raised areas for debris, a viewer had suggested I look into cellulose insulation instead of ripping up toilet paper. So I picked up a 10 kilogram vat for 10 bucks, and now I have enough to last me a lifetime of crafting. This stuff is basically just recycled paper that is used as insulation for attics in northern climates. Mix this together with some drywall mix to form a great sculpting putty. I applied this liberally to the floors where I wanted some extra debris, mostly in corners or around arches where debris would naturally collect. Some drywall mix was also added to gap fill a lot of areas where I wanted a smoother transition or to serve as grout between the XPS bricks. I'll be adding more weathering and debris texture later, but before we add any more structural details such as the roof, I want it to base coat with a dark color so that 
Any hard to reach areas, such as these aisles, would be dark gray and not require paint touch-ups. As I was mostly dealing with MDF, clay, and some XPS foam, I decided to go with Painter's Gesso, tinted dark gray with some acrylic. One of my viewers recommended this after my base coating video, and I thought it would be a good time to use it. Artists use this to prime porous canvases before a painting, so it seemed like the perfect application. It was quite cheap to boot. I then found a one gallon container on Amazon that comes in black that I'm ordering for future use. I'll, I'll link it in the description. It's really starting to look like something now. Holy moly. We're far from done yet, let's crack on. Between the clear story and the main aisle is this section called the Triforium. This typically has a walkway on larger cathedrals, and I'll be adding these wood planks to mimic that. They won't be usable really, but they add a nice element of realism. I'm just using some popsicle sticks cut to size on this small template. All of them should be roughly the same shape, minus the ones on the round apps, which I made custom fit. Dry fitting them all in just to make sure. Sweet. I then took a second to airbrush all the undersides of these black, as it was going to be a pain to reach them later once installed. After drying, I quickly popped them in with some super glue. To make the roof, I started with some black construction paper. This has two advantages. The black paper will stay muted on the underside of the church and not require any painting. And the paper is flexible enough to give off the illusion of a sagging fallen timber roof in parts of the building. I'm coming in with various sizes of popsicle sticks, coffee stir sticks, jumbo popsicle sticks, breaking them by hand in lots of cases to get that splintered wood look. I'm only covering the areas that I'll have exposed shingles in. The rest will be covered over with the actual roof shingles. For the Triforium roof, I decided to go for a sturdier approach and added chipboard sections to form the base of the shingles, painting the undersides of these black for similar reasons as before. I'm using this shingle method that I totally stole from more capable crafters. I cut notches into a large section of XPS and then shave off strips on the hot wire table. This gives me the fastest way to do realistic shingles that I've seen. Now it's just a matter of gluing them on top with some tacky glue. I ran out of Eileen's glue during this build and had to resort to more wood glue. I'll have to order more in bulk. Once the shingles had dried, I went in and chipped a bunch off in places to make it look more worn down. This next part was super fun. I 3D printed some gargoyles and grotesques to serve as little details on my buttresses. The buttress would typically have a heavy spire that would push down on them and transfer the load from the cathedral vault and prevent the building from falling apart. I'll link the files in the description that I used as well. They are free. I'm mounting them on toothpicks with super glue here so I can quickly prime them with spray can outside. The toothpicks also serve as good mounting points to stab into the XPS foam and make good contact with the MDF underneath. This makes for a much stronger bond with the wood glue. They're gonna be very likely to snap off otherwise at the lightest touch. Gargoyles like this were actually a method of diverting water off the structure. A gothic downspout, if you will. Let's also make a tiny sensor. Cathedrals would put incense in here and swing it across the middle of the cathedral to spread the aroma throughout the building. I'm using some old cheap jewelry donated to me by my wife. Super gluing these earrings together and some lengths of jewelry chain. This will hang near the altar and allow the priests access to it from here. It also makes for a great focal point that's visible from multiple angles. Here I'm also capping off the end of the roof with more XPS corner tiles. Simple enough to cut, similar to the buttress bricks, just a 90 degree cut this time. I coated the roof tiles in dark gesso and got to painting and weathering. If you saw my cloister video, I'm gonna go for a similar color palette here. I actually purchased an airbrush specifically for this project, doing some highlights and gradients on the roof, and the rest of the brickwork was made so much easier with it. It was worth a little bit of a learning curve to get used to. Similar to my cloister, the roof got a coating of blue, and all the exposed wood got a dark burnt umber with progressively dry brushed on highlights. Oh, and another bit of detailing before I forget. I want to thank the newest set of members on my Patreon. There's seven of you last month, so what better way to grant you all an imaginary sainthood and immortalize you with plaques inside of the cathedral? Carved out these names into EVA foam strips and hit it with the heat gun to bring out the detail. Hopefully it still shows up once I paint it with some dry brushing. 
Check out my Patreon if you want to chat with all these cool saints in this cathedral. To get more debris texture on the ground, I did two approaches. Tal grout and fine gravel mixed with PVA glue and paint. Both of these were applied intermixed together. Once the tile grout started drying a little bit, I came and blended it with a damp brush. This detailing step was important to do after the main coat of gesso, since a lot of the finer grains of dirt would be obscured by the thick paint base coat. They're going to show up great now, especially after adding a ton of black and brown washes to the floor. Once dry, I hit the center with a tan dry brush to pick out the parts that would be kissed by sunlight and then hit the whole thing with a matte varnish. I think it was Frankie that best put this concept in my head. Every project has a tedious step in it. You just need to push through, and it makes the whole thing worth it in the end. <laughs> For this build, every single step seemed like that. But you know what? I loved every minute of it, because it was all building to an amazing piece of architecture, inspired by history, and shared with all of you. Thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.